Hello there, my name is Konstantin Baum, I'm a master of wine and I'm not really sure whether I'm looking forward to this tasting. Normally I'm tasting the greatest wines in the world on this channel, but I was asked by a few of you whether I could taste the cheapest wines instead and I obliged. So I'm going to taste these four wines without knowing anything about them except that they are really, really cheap. So let's go. Normally I'm tasting great wines on a regular basis, but many of you don't know that when I was a student I was actually making some extra money by tasting really cheap wines. The company I was working for was doing quality assurance for supermarkets and discounters and we were tasting some of the cheapest wines, spirits and coffees in the world. Back then you knew that the day is going to be tough when they brought out the Tetra packs, but hey, I was young and needed the money. Even though I rarely drink wine that costs less than $10, I still find it important to see what happens at the bottom of the price scale too. Wine is an interesting product as it is all fermented grape juice, but a bottle can cost from $1 to $558,000 a bottle, which is incomprehensible to most people. Some of it is obviously related to quality, but when a bottle costs more than maybe $50, a lot of it is also hype. Germany, the country I'm based in, is a very competitive market for wine and the prices are extremely low for wine and many other products as well. On average, Germans have paid $2.78 per bottle of wine, which sometimes makes me wonder how after paying for the bottle, the capsule, the label, the cork and the transport, there's any money left for the wine and this is the average. But today, so I've been told, we are tasting wines that are even cheaper than that. I do not know anything about these wines except that they are all from a big discounter whose name starts with L and ends with D and that they are the cheapest my wine could find. Did I just say wine? I meant wife. I'm already drunk, sorry. Okay, let's start with bottle number one. Looks like white wine, pretty clearly. Golden color. So let's see what it smells and tastes like. So wine one smells fine, it smells a little bit like apple and pear. There's a little dull flavor in the background, it smells a little bit like bruised apple, but it's fine, there's no big fault there. Let's taste it. It's pretty light, very little body. It has good acidity, so there's a bit of freshness there, but it has a very short length, so it disappears out of your mouth like this, which is probably not a bad thing considering that this is not a great wine, but let's think about where this wine could come from. It can be quite difficult to identify the origin of a wine when the wines are this cheap because they are not as expressive as more high quality wines so they don't really directly tell you what they are. Most of them are quite diluted like this wine which just doesn't have a lot of expression and concentration. But I would say this is from a cooler climate. I kind of say this is probably a German wine entry level maybe from a big growing region like for example Rhein-Hessen and I would guess that this is probably Pinot Gris or Grauburgunder as we call it over here in Germany so this appley pear character the roundness on the palate the freshness kind of sounds like Grauburgunder to me but let's see what's in the bottle or behind the curtain oh pretty close I would say. So it's not Brauburgunder but it is Weißburgunder from Rheinhessen and it costs 2 euros 29 cents which would be a little bit more in dollars so pretty cheap. So let's move on to wine number two. The bottle is already quite a bit more heavy which isn't a sign of quality at all but it feels more valuable when the bottle is heavy. But it's not a good thing. I'm not a fan of big bottles or heavy bottles because they obviously cost more money to produce and they have a higher CO2 output. So you should actually avoid the heavy bottles. I prefer everyone bottling their wines in very light bottles. So let's taste this. So a similar color. It's also slightly golden, a little bit darker than the first wine. Oh, there's quite a lot of ripe and opulent fruit here. It smells a little bit like mango. There's also some papaya there. There's some pineapple there, so it's more exotic fruit. I can also sense a little bit of wood, but I'd guess that as it is a cheap wine, it's probably not aged in barriques, but aged in with chips, in contact with chips. But 
There's some spiciness coming from from some oak flavor to me at least. It's not obvious, but but there's something there. So let's taste it. So on the palate, the wine feels quite rich and rounded. It has quite a bit more body than the first wine. Um, the acidity is there, but it's also a little bit lowish. So it's a more opulent, more rich style, which would suggest for me that it's probably from a slightly warmer climate. But yeah, let's think about the origin of this wine. It's not, not that easy. For me, it doesn't really feel like new world, even though the style, the opulence and richness is quite new worldly. But for me, it feels not clean enough, if that makes sense for a new world wine. So it would probably rather be in the old world, but in a warm part of the old world. So maybe in Spain or Southern Italy or the South of France, maybe even. But um, yeah, it's tricky. I mean, style wise, and as I know that this is a cheap wine, I would probably go to a place like Sicily where they use um, grape varieties like Insolia, Grillo, which produce a similar style to this wine or maybe um, where else could it be from? I mean, it could be from the Languedoc Roussillon from a big brand producer who uh, yeah, uses some of those local grapes over there. But I'd, I'd go for Sicily. So let's see. Ah, okay, it's Bianco Terre Siciliane, Italiano, Italia, Italiano, Italia. So, um, and it's a liter, so um, it's heavier because it's a liter. It's not heavier because the bottle was heavy, I guess. Um, that makes sense. The grape varieties aren't mentioned on the label, it just says Cuvée, but yeah, it might be in Solia and Grillo, maybe some Chardonnay or something else that they just drop in there. It costs one euros 99 for a liter. So this is a lot cheaper than the first wine, but to be honest, it's actually a little bit more fun than the first wine. So I'd probably, if I had to choose between the two, I would go for this wine. Um, it's just a bit, there's a bit more there. So, and the label looks kind of nice too. Yeah, I wouldn't drink it, but, but, but if I had to choose, I would go for this one. Next, so let's move on to wine number three, which feels like a normal bottle, again, not a liter bottle. By the way, all of the first three wines were bottled under screw cap, which is a good thing, I think, in this price category. The wines are not supposed to be aged. Screw cap works fine with those wines. You can close the bottle after you had a glass and put it back in the fridge and nothing happens. So definitely use more screw caps. Oh, this looks like like a rosé, maybe? I don't know what this is supposed to be. This is a slightly weird color, but yeah, I'm guessing it's probably supposed to be a rosé. It's pretty light anyways. Oh, oh, oh. So yeah, I mean, this smells very bland. I mean, it smells like strawberries, but not the fresh strawberries, but more like strawberry gums. So it's not really, it doesn't really feel very natural. There's not much there. There's a little bit of lactic flavor to the wine as well, which can be fine. But in this case, I think it's a little bit too much. Yeah, I mean, on the palate, it's just not nice. Not nice at all. I mean, it feels sweet. So there's definitely some residual sugar there. There's very little acidity. This is not a fresh and vibrant Rosé, it's more, yeah, it feels like a cooked uh, rosé that had some sugar added to it. So it's not very fun at all. I don't, I don't like this, I don't like this. So when it comes to origin, this is kind of difficult. I would actually, again, be in Germany because the fruit flavor, the fruit profile doesn't really feel very, um, maybe Spanish, where they also produce a lot of cheap rosé. It feels a little bit, um, yeah, simplistic could be a Dornfelder Rosé from a big growing region, from a big producer in Germany. Again, maybe Rheinhessen or Pfalz, I would guess. So let's see. Oh, this is pretty much spot on. So this is a Dornfelder Rosé from, 
where's the growing region? Ah, from Fals. So um, I was right. Yeah. Um, Dornfelder Rosé, yeah, still not a wine that I would want to drink. It's hard trocken, which means that it's off dry. And I don't like off dry rosés as a general rule. So this would not be something that would end up on my kitchen table. So let's move on to wine number four. The last wine that, I'm, that I have to taste. This is actually not bottled on the screw cap. So not bottled on the cork. Let's see. It's a red wine, as you can probably also tell. Okay, this smells funky. It smells a little bit like cherries, but there's also some greenness to the wine. So it doesn't really feel like the grapes were fully ripe. I also have to add, in this price category, red wines are probably always the underperformers. I think if I would only have three euros or three dollars for a bottle of wine, I would rather go for white wine because in general, in this price category, white wines are better than red wines. Red wines just generally cost a little bit more to produce. So it doesn't surprise me that this is not the best wine in the tasting. So on the palate, it actually feels all right. It's juicy and fresh. There are some tannins, but very little tannins. And it doesn't really feel like anyone has put a lot of effort into this wine, which isn't a big surprise. If you're only spending little money on a wine, then you can't really expect it to be a great wine or that anyone would spend a lot of time with this wine. But um, yeah, it's okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's a decent wine, I would say. So let's think about where this wine could be from. I think it's kind of tricky. It's difficult to say. On the palate, it feels like it could come from a warmer climate, but on the nose, it actually feels like it's from a cooler climate because there's some unripeness there, some green herbaceous notes. So I'd probably end up in a cooler climate in Europe and it could actually be a Dornfelder from uh, Fals or Rheinhessen again, um, like a big bulk produced Dornfelder red wine. It could also be from the south of France, like a very simplistic, wine from a south of France vineyard, even though this part of the world is a little bit warmer in general. So normally you wouldn't really get those herbaceous notes. I don't really see it coming from like the Loire or any, any place like that. It could maybe be from Bordeaux, but the tannins are not there. So I'd probably end up again with Dornfelder, which is the grape variety from the Rosé as well. And I would say it's probably from, from the Falls again. So let's see. Oh. I uh, was completely wrong there. This is a Merlot from Sicily, which is not, in my defense, not necessarily the most classic wine, but um, yeah, okay, it's not bad. Sicily wins this tasting, in my opinion. The two best wines were probably the Sicilian ones, and this cost 179, 1 euro 79, insane. I think what we learned today is that you get what you pay for. None of these wines were completely terrible, even though the rosé was pretty close. But is that really what we should be aiming for? Shouldn't we aim for more than terrible? Wine for me should tell a story and all of these wines don't really tell a story, not a story that I want to listen to at least. And I also want to make sure that the wine I drink pays the producer's salary. If I'd have to pick a favorite out of these four wines, I'd go for the good old liter bottle of Sicilian white. It's pretty all right, not too bad. I'm not going to drink it, but it's pretty all right. So thank you for watching. If you liked this video, then please like it down here. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. My question of the day is, what is the lowest you go when you buy wine? Please comment down below. I hope I see you guys again soon. Until then, stay thirsty. No, not that kind of thirsty. Bye.